the Bears score the go-ahead touchdown. They've been losing the entire game. Doug Kramer fumbles it, and he says, I'm not going to apologize for a win. What a fucking... Fuck I will right. never apologize no. for a win. We, no, we have still have to 23 win. 23 seconds left. We still have to win. Left. Left. You gotta go. They were like... Dave, don't say that. We haven't won the game yet. <laughs> yeah. And so then White Sox Dave, he deletes his Instagram account after the game. <laughs> We're on the rundown. Did you delete your Instagram yesterday? Rundown, Monday, October 28th. We've got PFT, Eddie, myself, uh, Stephen Shea. We're brought to you by High Noon. Here's the High Noon. Iced tea, vodka iced tea. This is good uh, stuff. It's made with real vodka, real iced tea with no added sugar, no carbonation. Uh, so if you're a hard tea lover who's done with the sugary malt-based teas, you're going to love the new High Noon Vodka Iced Tea. With 90 calories, High Noon Vodka Iced Tea is great for any occasion under the sun and comes in four delicious flavors you got to try. they got the original peach, which is my personal favorite, lemon and raspberry. Visit HighNoonSpirits.com to find a pack near you. I mean, it's... Uh, overreaction Monday, but there's no overreacting to the game last night. Uh, PFT, I thought your reaction was perfectly normal. Oh, oh my God! God! Yeah! Yeah! Oh Holy fuck! God. Let's go! What the fuck? Jerry and Daniels in the fucking face! Yes! Yes! Whoa! What the fuck? What the fuck? Whoa! Holy shit! I'm um, reacting to the game-winning Hail Mary from Jaden Daniels, like 65-ish yards against the Bears to win the game. How are we feeling this morning in PFT? I'm still reacting. Uh, I'm, I'm watching all the footage of it. You just mentioned before we started taping that there's an all-22 I haven't got my eyes on yet. So I'm watching every single clip, uh, all, the, all the different angles, all the fan shots. Mm -hmm. I even watch the dots. You know, the dots yep. where they show, like, on the screen. Here's Sam what the yep. That's the most, no offense to Sam, that's the most boring way to watch <laughs> a football play. And real football heads online, like the, the film guys, the X's yep. and O guys, they love watching the dots move down the field. Yep. I can't stand it, but I was watching the dots, and I was like, that's a good dot right there. Watch, there's a dot behind you. Be careful that guy. Uh, it was, it's, it's sad to say, but I think that was my happiest NFL moment. Field. Dan Snyder saw the team saying number one still, but in terms For a of moment, I don't. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Well, yeah, I don't have a lot to choose from. I really don't. So they, the Redskins won the Super Bowl when I was like six. Yeah, I barely remember that. And uh, then we beat the Bucks in the playoffs. You remember that game? I do. Mark I think Brunel you guys had 125 yards of total offense. Yeah, Mark Brunel had 41 yards passing, and we won 17-10. <laughs> Sean Taylor got ejected. Yep. Uh, that until yesterday, that was my top moment. And then I guess the Sean Taylor fumble six against uh, against the Eagles was pretty good too. But yeah, I mean it was a it was a cool moment. It was not a very entertaining game. There was uh, not until a lot of action. last like five minutes, starting with. Uh, Doug Kramer fumble, I yeah. believe is, is the gentleman's name. Uh, but congrats. Eddie, how are we feeling this morning? Obviously, it started with Doug Kramer, but ended in horrific fashion. Yeah, I, honestly, I, there's things to be mad about, but I, I'm still stunned, however many hours later. Um, stunned, numb, and uh, dejected. It, it's, it's, it sucks. It's a tough loss. Um, a lot of people are going to say the Bears didn't deserve to win that game, which... I, I can't disagree with you. The commanders were the better team for, what, the first three and a half quarters, yep. more than three and a half quarters. Um, you're right. If anyone just turned the game on with six minutes left, that's all they needed to see. Yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah, the, you can't lose away games like that in the NFL, and that's going to be one if we're at home in the playoffs. You're going to think about that play over and over and over again. So. Where do you stand with this coaching staff? I mean, I've always been out on them. I think the time to reset was when you brought in Caleb because uh, you just give him a fresh set of guys. There is an element I'd like. I, they finished I, last year strong, though. But but still, but it's still he's not he's not a 
he's not an NFL coach that's going to lead a team to the Super Bowl. It's just not going to happen. Cut the flus loose? Yeah, it's just you cut the flus loose. Like It sucks because, like, you know, I think you're 100% right about that. They should have let him go last year. Yeah. That was the time to do it. 100%. And now you're, this is the scenario that you knew that you were going to get yourself into where you don't have full faith in Eberflus, but you also don't want to just screw Caleb over with having regime change after, like, year one. That's exactly what you thought was going to happen. Yeah, and, what's happening. and the market couldn't have been fuller. Like, it, Bill's there, Vrabel's there, Harbaugh's there. Like, there's so many guys who you have confidence going into the season with, and we just stick with the lame duck. So it's – Devil's advocate is Eberflus not necessarily the problem. He's a defensive coach. Obviously, the Tyreek Stevenson at the end of the game, tough, and you can have coaching on up to that. Last year, Luke Getzey, the offensive coordinator, kind of scapegoat. He's now in Vegas. Is this a Shane Walter thing? Because their defense is playing awesome. Regardless of the you know last play of the game, their defense overall is playing awesome. Yeah, Eberflus is a defensive coach. Listen, Shane Waldron had a very, very, very rough start. He picked it up in the, within the last couple of weeks. This past game, he took a little step back. The Doug Kramer handoff at the goal line, uh, not great, uh, amongst other things. Uh, but at the end of the day, and I can't believe I am like I know I just shit all over Eberflus, but. There is an element of luck, and you never know what's going to happen on a Hail Mary. Granted, every coach in America, I don't know if you saw, I saw your friend Diana Rossini's tweet that NFL, an NFL coach texted her, and they're going to show that play as what not to do, how to defend a Hail Mary. That's also so. her just bragging that NFL <laughs> coach. She, she wanted everybody to know that she's still she's texting with NFL head coaches. Yeah. I actually think if you're going to make a case against Eberflus, it's not on the Hail Mary. Uh, that's on Stevenson. He's like flipping off the crowd, yep. waving goodbye. Uh, that was an all-time boneheaded play. But I think the case against Eberflus would be on the plays leading up to the Hail Mary. The, the drive that the commanders went on, we got the ball at, what, like the 24-yard line? Yeah. Uh, 23 seconds left, I think. Mm -hmm. And we were able to move the ball really well. And we knew where we had to get in order to throw a Hail Mary. And we just we got those yards, called all the right timeouts. And, uh, yeah, especially the last play. Yep. The last play before the Hail Mary, the quick out to Terry McLaurin that Tony Romo was like, here's what they're going to do. You're going to want to gain like 13 to 14 yards here so that you can have an opportunity to get the ball to the end zone. And then just nobody guarded Terry McLaurin on that. Yeah, and I saw the All-22 on that, and the Bears' DBs are running around like with their chickens with their head cut off. So he could have called a timeout there and reset it, but instead they gave him a free 15 yards. and. Look what happened. Uh, I'll kind of defend that. Like in the last couple seconds of a game, you're trying to just not give up a massive play. There are still 65 yards. Like it's very far. But I yeah. do want to ask you guys because we were all watching this together in the gambling cave yesterday. White Sox Dave yeah. had the moment. He deleted his Instagram. No, he did He deleted his Instagram, which is I don't understand that move at all. <laughs> and I'll let, you, I'll, I'll let you set it up so in case somebody hasn't seen so, it. So 23 or 24 seconds left. Um, the Bears score the go-ahead touchdown. They've been losing the entire game. Doug Kramer fumbles it, and he says, I'm not going to apologize for a win. What a Holy fucking... Fuck, I will right. never apologize no. for a win. We, no, we have have still have to 23 win. seconds left. 23 still have seconds to win. left. Still, gotta go. still 24 seconds left, I believe. Uh, at this point, the Bears up four, was it? Uh, to go up four, up three. They're up a, 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 more than a... I don't know if they, if they had done the two-point conversion yet, but credit to the other guys in that room. I know Big Cat said it. Yes, I, think immediately I, I heard like, some other people say it too. They were like, Dave, don't say that. We haven't won the game yet. <laughs> yeah. And so then White Sox Dave, he deletes his Instagram account after the game. <laughs> what, I, why? You re I got to call <laughs> Why Instagram? <laughs> yeah. Are you sure he did this? Yeah, that's what they were saying out front, yeah. I'm gonna call him. I don't. I don't. I don't get that move. But also, just, just don't open the app. I also thought it was hilarious for him to criticize Tyreek Stevenson when he basically did our version of that <laughs> Dave, minutes before. We're on the rundown. Did you delete your Instagram yesterday? No. Oh, people were saying that you deleted your Instagram. No. Who, who said that? I think it was uh, Fistuli, maybe Page. Did you delete any form of social media yesterday? No. Okay. Okay. All right. I, I guess. Right now. Yeah. yeah, but I heard you reactivated this morning. I guess I got fake news by Fistuli. You very much did. All right. My fault. My All fault right. for spreading fake news. Thanks. Well, so I've said it before. I've said it again. One of the a, a large reason I'm not joking at all of why I think the Bears will never win the big one is because I got to share a fandom with that idiot. <laughs> like he's just not a guy where things go well. 
for. Him criticizing Tyreek Stevenson had me rolling. That's the thing. Like, like, you, like, you did that. Well, that's what we're You about, literally did that. We're about to record our show in a half hour. I'm going to be like, hey, all right, like, we are, we're the locker room. Big Cat, your Eber flu. like, what are we doing? How are we talking to Dave? Like, they're yeah. talking to Stevenson. So, it's accountability. All so, we had a big debate on part of my take this, this morning about uh, how good the commander's offense looked. Yep. I thought that they played great. I said the word great in the first three quarters. At least the yeah. first the first they, half is what I, I was hearing. I, I, I heard you say they moved the ball well, which is which is correct. They got like I think almost 500 yards of offense. That's a yes. very, that's a very good day of offense. We couldn't score. That's a pretty big right. part of football. Yeah. And so you'd like to be able to improve the red zone offense, but um, for me, like I was I was nervous that Jaden. Once I found out he was going to play, I was nervous that he wouldn't be himself. I was nervous yep. that some other thing would happen to him because he's hurting, he's thinking about his ribs, he gets injured in a different way. I thought that Jaden looked incredible yesterday. Yep. I thought he played really, really well. So that was a storyline going into the game is like number one versus number two pick. Obviously the storyline today is going to be the Hail Mary, Tarek Stevenson, everything kind of around that. But just quick temperature check. You guys have the number two pick. Uh, obviously Jaden Daniels after Caleb Williams picked. How do you feel about that decision as of right now? About picking Jaden Daniels? Yes, just temperature check. How are you feeling about him What's overall? the hottest temperature I can do? <laughs> What's the hottest temperature possible? Yeah. The sun? <laughs> yeah. I'm the sun. Yeah. Uh, Eddie, I'll ask the same question for you. Number one pick, Caleb Williams. Are you happy with that decision right now? Listen, I, I was extremely impressed with Jaden Daniels. I thought the way he commanded the offense was number one of how uh, I, I was what I, of what I was impressed by. Um, he won. He won the first match. They're, these guys are going to battle again, but I'm still sticking with Caleb Williams. So. Okay. Okay. That's just what I wanted to know. Um, fair. Do you think that'd be good or bad for this company? Well, I think it'd be probably good for this company. I'm just speaking like on a interpersonal level, having, uh, having the commanders and bears play like all these meaningful games that we think they might end up playing at some point in the next 10 years. I think it's going to be great content. And I also think that it's going to be very – everyone – I'm going to be walking on eggshells. Yeah, because yesterday, to an extent, it was our first time in, like, the Finer Things Club, yeah. right? Like, we were yeah. – let in for the first time, I looked at you right when the game started. I was like, hey, it's so weird seeing Bears 4-2, and two, Commanders 5-2. Yeah. and two. Like, we are uh, hopeful franchises. Yeah. Yeah. It was really weird. I don't I, – yeah, I don't know how to win. <laughs> I'm very bad at it. Hank has to give me like a, a lesson. He's got to teach me a class on how to how to become a, a real dickhead winner. It is my belief that if you were not definitely like a Super Bowl contender and right now, I mean, we'll see what happens. I think both teams are good. I don't know if you'd put both teams in like absolute contenders and maybe that's incorrect for, for Washington right now. No, I I, I, if, you I, if you look at the NFC, I don't think that we are. Yeah. I, th I think the Lions, it's the Lions. Right. If, if you're not that group, I think the funnest experience as a football fan is having a, a young, ideally rookie quarterback, you know, with a lot of hope and just seeing them grow. Because you're going to get moments like this once in a while, yeah. which is awesome. Um, moving on, I don't think we need to talk about Malik Willis and, and the comeback that he led. That, that was great. Congrats to Malik Willis. Um, He's going to make a lot of money. Do you think Malik Willis is going to make a lot of money? I think somebody's going to pay Malik Willis now. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be like insane money, but okay. based on how he's looking on the Titans compared to what he saw with the Packers, he's going to get a nice contract. Like good money. Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, he's been, he's a smaller guy, but he is super athletic, uh, you know, runs around, made some plays. And yeah, obviously the Packers pulled out a game, beat the Jaguars. Congrats. Um, they shouldn't have, but, or not they shouldn't have, but they were trailing most of the game. Jordan Love, hopefully he's okay with groin injury. Um, let's talk about the uh, Jets. They lose again. This team has such high hopes. I mean, they're paper champions. They're supposed to be, you know, Super Bowl contenders going through here. Now they trade for Devontae Adams. Things are going wrong. They, fought, they fired Salah. Um, from the outside looking in, Eddie, how do you view the Jets after another horrible loss this time to the New England Patriots, who lost Drake May in the first quarter? I don't know if you guys saw that meme. It was from a Boston sports account. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't remember which one it is, but it was, a, it, was the, it was a meme from The Office. Yeah. And it was Michael Scott and another guy shaking hands, and it said, <laughs> the Jets, two and six. I don't know, high, highest expectations in 25 years. Patriots, the lowest expectations in 25 years, both two and six. <laughs> Boston sports throwback. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Hank, Hank dropped that in the group chat right when it came out. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a tough loss for the Jets because, I mean, Eddie, Eddie said it, the, the Patriots right now are trying to get the first overall pick. That's where they yeah. want to be at the end of the yeah. season. And to have the Jets with, I like using the word aspirations, 
Yeah. I think it's just a fancy word. Like it's one of those $10 words that means hope. Like they had Super Bowl aspirations this year. And then the Patriots in their lowest just beat them. And it, it wasn't a particularly good game. Like it was kind of ugly. Yep. I didn't think Aaron Rodgers looked awful in the game, but the man, I just bad don't, time to be a Jets fan. I don't understand how they're so broken. I think the reputation for the Jets going into this year, you know, especially with Sala, who's a defensive coach, and, you know, they had hard knocks for and, like, they are a defense. Like, Sauce Gardner's really good. Like, Quentin Williams is really good. Um, Quincy Williams is really Like, they have good players. But the Jets, especially on defense, are soft. They're just not what we expected from them. I think they're a soft team. I think their offensive line is bad. They don't have a lot of time to do what they want to do. They are kind of recommitting to the run and running it more, but they're just getting their ass kicked on defense, and you can't have that happen when Jacoby Brissett's playing three quarters. I think I'm going to put some money on the Jets now. I feel like that that quote right there from Stephen Shea, calling them soft. They're soft. Like you got Stephen Shea <laughs> on national internet calling you soft. <laughs> That's going to, they got to show this in the locker room. They should. They should. They should. They're soft. They need to watch more of their bad press clippings. I yeah. feel like they're, they're, they're too insulated. Yeah. You know, like Aaron Rodgers might not even have electricity in that locker room. <laughs> He's like, no, the, the uh, frequency is going to give you bad yeah. skin ailments or whatever. They need to watch this. They right. need to see Stephen Chase in here and be like, you're a soft football team. Sauce Gardner should be breaking a pair of Stephen's Arthur glasses after every <laughs> Yeah. For the rest of the season. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know what you do to fix the Jets. They've already done all the quick fixes, right? I think yeah. they're out of quick, quick fixes. Yeah. Firing a coach, quick fix. Respect. Firing a coach with no plan, really. Yeah. Like, they just elevated their defensive coordinator who's like, yeah. okay, I guess I'll coach the football team. What does that mean? Yeah. What do I do? And so now the team got worse and the defense got worse because you took their defense coordinator. Now he's in charge of looking after the team. He's a great defensive coordinator. Yeah. Yeah. He should be doing that. Yeah. So they had no plan. That was quick fix. Sign Devontae Adams, quick fix. Yep. Get Hassan Reddick back in the building, quick fix. Yeah. I think this is one of the first cases of the NFL gaming, a little NBA-ish. You're just giving in to the demands of one guy. Yeah. And yeah. that doesn't work out a lot of the time. Yeah. It just doesn't work out. Yeah. That's a fair point. Also, uh, I think Edelman said this. We've been talking about it a little bit on, on PMT, but uh, going for the old quarterback is not always a great – in fact, it's almost never a good move. It worked for you. You're wearing the <laughs> shirt. But the fact that Tom Brady did it, now everyone's like, oh, yeah, let's just get you know one of the best quarterbacks of a generation when he's 40. And then that we're gonna be uh, we're gonna have Super Bowl aspirations. I think you have to be set up like the Jets' problem for years has been the offensive line. Aaron Rodgers has never been uh, like a running quarterback. He's been able to buy a little bit of time in the pocket, but he gets the ball out quick. If you have a bad offensive line, that's a tough recipe for that. The Bucks had a very good offensive line when they signed Tom Brady, and he kind of helped accentuate that. I think you have to be set up for that. I don't think the Jets appropriately were. Um, let's talk about. Uh, did you guys see Trayvon Diggs after Sunday yeah. Night Football run out uh, of the locker room and confront a reporter about a tweet? We can talk about it more. What, 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 what were you doing then? Uh, about asking what he was doing on, the, on a certain play. I, I, I'm not positive. I believe it is the George Kittle play. Is that correct? Do, do you? If you think I watched a second of football after that Hail Mary. <laughs> uh, so there was, was uh, I, when I was searching on Twitter, that's what I found uh, the most like Trayvon Diggs uh, clips uh, play was a play where George Kittle got the ball uh, down the sideline and Trayvon Diggs, I, I've seen it before, I'm gonna see in the future, he was loafing. He was not running super hard to the ball. He ends up being the, he's supposed to be the contained guy. George Kittle is faster than he thought and then he pushes him out, you know, maybe five or so yards later than he should have. That's what I think was the play. So uh, apologies if I'm wrong there, but Trayvon Diggs storms out of locker room, finds the reporter, consults him, <laughs> or consults with him and says, like, what are, why are you tweeting this? Like, uh, I, I, you don't know anything about football. You couldn't do what I do, yeah. et cetera. And then throws a D's nuts joke on him uh, yeah. as he walks away while the reporter asks for comment. Um, what are your thoughts on Trayvon Diggs going after this reporter? The D's nuts, I think, always plays. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's a good thing for the sport. I also think that uh, the reporter is probably right, or else Diggs wouldn't have reacted like that. Yeah. If the reporter actually had everything wrong about that play, yeah. 
then Diggs would just be like, oh, whatever, this guy's a fucking idiot. And right. w- wouldn't, like, go out of the locker room to confront him yeah. and then grab his dick at him. <laughs> that's that's how you know that the guy's right. So, yeah. uh, But that's kind of what Diggs is known for, too. He doesn't always play every snap, like, perfectly. Sure. And he'll just, you know, he bites on pump fakes. Yep. He goes for picks. Uh, he had that one year where he had, what was it, like, like seven nine, interceptions six, in the yeah, first, ton, like, yeah. ten games or something, yep. eight games. Uh, so, yeah, Diggs, he takes chances. He doesn't always play, like, to the – to the exact playbook, but yeah. Um, yeah, I think the reporter was right. Yeah, Eddie, do you like going after the reporter? Uh, sure. <laughs> sorry. Uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Eddie's still the judge. Let's talk about, uh, let's give him a minute, we'll talk about NASCAR. How, I, I want to know from Eddie's perspective, how, how soon do you think, like, what are you looking forward to this week that will pull you out? Like, are you looking for game previews for next week? Who do you guys play next week? We got the Cardinals in okay. Arizona and... We've, this is our like third must-win game of the year. That's so. a fun game. You need yeah. something cool to happen this week to to get you excited about looking forward for for this weekend's game. I know it's gonna you're gonna go through the, the stages of grief. Yeah, you're probably it, in shock still. Well, it's like we start our division gauntlet in two weeks, so it was Commanders, Cardinals, oh, right. Patriots. So it's like we need to go two and one mandatory. Yeah, three and zero was on the table. So we got to win these two games. So if we lose Sunday against Arizona, it's we're done. If the Patriots beat the Bears, I think Big Cat might actually murder Hank. <laughs> I think that's on the table. Oh, and he has to get a tattoo now. He does. Yeah, that's brutal. But I think I think there's no tattoos. Hank should be put in witness protection <laughs> just for his own safety. You think the Pats will be in the Hungry Dog next week? Uh, you mean like two weeks from now? Oh, two weeks from now. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, Hank's too smart. He won't make it that obvious. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right, let's take a quick break to talk about NASCAR. The adrenaline of the Daytona 500 is something you have to experience in person. There's nothing like witnessing the stars of NASCAR battle for position going 200 miles an hour on this two and a half mile speedway. I had no idea the speedway was that long. 40 drivers will compete against the likes of Chase Elliott, Ryan Blaney, Denny Hamlin, Ross Chastain, and Bubba Wallace as they try to make their mark on a historic NASCAR season. You won't want to miss this once in a lifetime sporting event. Purchase your tickets for the 2025 Daytona 500 at Daytona 500. Dot com. I want to talk about this because I picked this up in real time and I tweeted about it and I kind of complained about it and then I blogged after uh, like a uh, little after the Bucks game and then I heard quotes from the press conference so we saw this in real time it was very early in the game I think it was like second quarter Bucks Falcons Kyle Pitts catches his second touchdown he's 49 yard play he catches it he's running he's kind of pumping the ball like this the ball's in his left hand Antoine Winfield Jr. makes a great play he did this twice last year including once against the Falcons against Desmond Ritter I don't know why Kyle Pitts would mess around with this but Antoine Winfield comes up behind him and strips the ball at the goal line it's October 2024 and we do not have a goal line cam in that game. I don't know how that's possible, but Todd Bowles confirmed after the game it was uh, it was a scoring play, it was ruled a touchdown on the field, so they had to review it. The referee said they did not overturn the decision. The, the call was the play stands because they did not have a down the line camera. Now, the replays they were showing us, which is what I call that as weird in real time, was that none of them were down the line. It was like kind of on an angle, so you couldn't really see if the ball crossed the plane. After the game, you know, the quote from Bulls comes out in the press conference, but there's a reporter who, uh, or maybe a photographer, who is taking video basically at the goal line. He's a one and a half yard line, and it does look from his vantage point, and he slowed it down and everything, that the ball is out. The Bucks lost this game by uh, five points. This was a seven point play. How do you feel about, I, and I don't know if this is the case for anyone else in the entire league, but how is it possible that we don't have a goal line cam or pylon cams in every single stadium. Yeah, billion dollar league, right? Belichick was complaining about that when, when he was with the Patriots. Is it a stadium issue? I, I don't know. I talked to, to, talk to, to someone with the Bucks and I was asking about specifically, is this like a Bucks thing? Is this a Fox thing? Like, how is this possible? There have to, and the fact that Anton Winfield Jr. himself did this twice last year, the Falcons game was at home. I forget what the other one was, if that was home or away, but this has happened. And also just like any quarterback sneak or any you know goal line play, you're depending on not only the ref seeing it down the goal line, but 
replay evidence. You ch- you v- you do replay in every since, scoring play. Since How do they don't not have this? Since it was a long play, do you think they didn't have their guys set up at the goal line? Like if that play had happened inside mm. the 10-yard line, they've got the guy down there on the goal line? Maybe. I didn't know that those cameras were moving. I guess there are the guys that are on like those cranes that kind of move. I don't know. It's it's shocking, especially with the amount of money that's wagered on NFL games across the country and all over the world. But the chip How is that not? We have yes, the, chip. The, yes, the, the chip yes. technology works, right? Yes, and I've heard they like have done that in like camps and like in preseason. I don't know why they I wouldn't. Think they do secretly that in the did it at, at one point, and they were using it to track punts going out of bounds. Mm. But the chips exist. Yes. You put the chip in the ball. Although I don't like the chip in the ball necessarily all the time because I like the chain gang. I like bringing those guys are getting hurt way too much. They, they're having a tough season. <laughs> I mean, it's every week. They're having a tough season. We got to get like medical staff for the chain gang and, and figure out what's up with all these soft tissue injuries because it's been it's been a tough year to be on the chain gang. Yeah, they need like they need different. They need training. Like there needs to be like put them in a box and like shoot Roman candles at them. And if they can't dodge out of the way, you can't be on the chain gang. Yeah. How do you get hurt so much? Yeah, they're just get they're out not, of the way. not the most mobile guys. Yeah. They have a hard time uh, avoiding uh, NFL players that are coming. To it seems like a chain gang requirement is you got to be 65 plus. It just seems like that based on the guys that are going down. Which I don't hate that. Like yeah. let, let, uh, that's, sure. a, that's a dad position. But, but also got to be a mobile dad. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get, yeah. Get, actually, get pad it up. Actually, Those guys, the guardian caps. I like them the way that they are. <laughs> I like the old guys. I agree. Like the NFL would kind of suck if it was like these jacked up, finely tuned athletes holding the chain. I mean, Agreed. all the refs are yoked now. I know. I don't like that. I liked when there was one jacked up ref. <laughs> it's like kickers. Kickers got two jacked too. Yeah. Keep the chain gang frumpy and unathletic. I like that. <laughs> and then you get the bonus treat of them getting rolled up on every now and again. It's <laughs> yeah. just a dangerous job. The NFL didn't get rid of the, rid of the uh, booger mobile. It could be different this one too, Steven. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was a, it was a weird play and. Uh, I like the rule where if, if you fumble through the end zone, it's a touchback. I do too. Take. Shout out Rich Eisen. I think don't, don't shout out Rich Eisen. I've been on this take for longer than Rich. <laughs> he hates it. Yeah. It, oh, he hates it. Yeah. Oh, I thought he was on my side. No, he. All right, hates yeah. It. Fuck Rich Eisen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great rule. It's chaos. Every other yeah, rule I agree. in the NFL is designed to to support the offense and reward the offense. Let the defense have this one. Yep. You, you don't want the rule to exist, then just don't fumble the ball through the end zone. Right. Exactly. Um, do we have any other NFL? Topics to go through, sorry. Uh, all right, World Series, Dodgers go up 2-0. How much baseball did you guys watch this weekend? I watched, let's see, 10 innings. I watched uh, 17 innings of baseball this weekend. Wow. I missed the start of game two. All right. Hell yeah. How about you? You a baseball guy? Yeah, this is the most I've been into the baseball playoffs in a little bit. I think they've been great. Um, game one was obviously unbelievable with the Freeman walk-off. Uh, game two, they went down a little bit. Here's my thing. I, the Yankees seem to get one of those to answer because uh, apparently Fat Joe is going to be at Yankee Stadium. So? Well, listen, the I, you didn't see the Ice Cube thing. No. Yeah, see, you're sitting there watching fucking Blue's Clues while <laughs> cool things are happening in the baseball world. Steve. Steve. I don't know how they bring out Fat Joe at, with uh, the counter Ice Cube going down 2-0. It's a yeah. tough moment for Fat Joe. So Ice Cube came out and did a little pregame rap. Okay. Got everybody really jacked up. It was up. cool. Although I feel like the Yankees liked it as much as the Dodgers players. Yeah. The Yankees plans, fans were enjoying it. Okay. Uh, you think Fat Joe is going to be an issue? I'm just like, I mean, Fat Joe's courtside at, you know, 20 MS, like, uh, Knicks games every year. So why do I care that Fat Joe is at Yankee Stadium? I, would, I expect Fat Joe to be there. Is he still fat? He's not fat. I don't no, think no, no, no. He's, 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 yeah, he's but, but he's still Fat Joe? Did he, is he going to change his name or is he going to turn into, like, P-H-A-T Joe? I mean... Lil Wayne's what, like 45? So he's still a little. Maybe guy. he just turns into just Joe, like is Mike Stubb. Is he that short? I think Lil Wayne's a little guy. Is he like sub five five? Let me see. That's Lil Bow Wow turning into just Bow Wow. I like how you refer to height like it's a forty time. <laughs> uh, let's see here, Lil Wayne height height. He's five five. He's Lil. Okay. okay. He's always gonna be Lil. All right, that's fair. Though. Fat Joe's not fat though. Uh, he wears he wears bigger like it's it's tough to tell. He he doesn't look like he's as big as he's he definitely is. lost weight. What about Otani? Is he is he going to be missing time? Why would I know this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yeah. Eddie, do you know? The look on his face, I didn't see. All right, so but, uh, you saw the slide though, right? Yes, I saw the slide. I don't he, think that Otani's a guy that's going to milk an injury. I think that if he's going to stay down like that, he's he's honestly hurt. Yeah, oh, yeah. I don't know. 
I mean, World Series, obviously you want him in, but if the Dodgers go out 3-0, it'd be a shame to... I mean, we're just rooting for drama at this point. Like, neither of our teams. I just want a good series, so... Would a good series do be a, a sweep? No. Because that could be a good series for some people. I don't know. Game two was pretty boring. Yeah. So he show he might miss games? Yeah, he got hurt. Signed in a second. He was holding his wrist pretty bad. I think it might have been, yeah, either his wrist, some, something in this area. Yeah. It's an upper body injury, upper uh, left body injury. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, one of the most shocking upper bodies, which includes the face, Dwayne Wade's statue. Crazy. What are your guys' thoughts on the unveiling of this statue? Eddie, I'll start with you. So I used to work at a job where I was a production assistant and I would do the graphics on like a sports TV show. Okay. And you know, everyone has watched those and you see like a fuck up, like someone, you know, scored 999 points in a basketball game. It's just sure. mistakes. Yep. And everyone loves clipping them and putting them out there. Be like, oh, ESPN's drunk, this, this, and this. And uh, I, I, just my experience being, I was 25 at the time, I get how that happens. It's just a little clicking of a mouse, sure. clicking of a decimal. How a statue goes through that many layers to get the curtain pulled off, to, I, I just don't understand how it happens. I just don't get it. It's, it's a bad look. Yeah. He looked thousand. like he was 60. Or older. Yeah. It, it looked like a, a still shot from Wild Hogs, that movie with Tim Allen. Yeah. It was crazy. I, I don't know what the statue process is. I've never met a, a sculptor, so I'd like to talk to one about that. But I'm just anti-statue in general. Yeah? I don't, I don't think... Statues are really weird, aren't they? Like, think about the concept of a statue. You're going to make, like, a, a, a rock representation of a human being, and then everyone has to walk by and look at you. It's a strange thing to have a statue. Yeah. I guess, but if it's outside like your home arena and you're a uh, you know, former athlete that played there, I think that's pretty cool. That's kind of cool to like memorialize your career. Yeah, like this guy, on Lucas Oil. Like, this guy was here. I think Dwayne Wade deserves it. one. Yeah. Outside of, you know, whatever the hell the name of the Miami arena is now. And we're both going to be fans of teams that have statues coming. Like Ovi's going to get one. Ovi's going to get one. Yeah, yeah. Kane, Taze are going to get one. Maybe more Blackhawks. Will they give one for Brady? Uh, I would be surprised. I, I had to think that I thought he deserved one just because, you know, that yeah. title is him. But, um, no, there's a there's a statue inside the headquarters for, like, a bunch of the Super Bowl 37 winners, like Gruden and Sapp and John, uh, those guys. But I might also be anti-statue because the one guy that we've put up a statue for in, like, the last 30 years wasn't even a statue. The Sean Taylor one. Mm. <laughs> the, there, there was the no body. There was no body. The jersey and pants. It was just his clothes. I think that this statue of Dwayne Wade is worse than that. Because at yeah. least that, you forget about the unveiling, and it's like, well, where the fuck is it? And it's like, oh, you have his jersey here, yeah. which is cool. But this does – the most accurate meme I saw was the uh, the trainer from Rocky uh, who's like, you know, stop the fight. Like, that guy. Maybe. That's what that's – what, <laughs> that's what uh, – Was it Kobe's bad, too? Statues no. – I thought his was bad, too. Kobe, Allen Iverson's is very tiny. Yeah, he's got. John Ronaldo's is very bad. Yeah. But the the Allen Iverson, that's that's fake news because that's the size of all their statues. Mm, oh. Okay. Yeah. I just Max was very adamant about that that it's not a small statue. <laughs> so I just it, want to make sure that I get that out there. It, it, you know, my only counter I have is, is is it like a haircut when you know the barber's doing a bad job and you're just like yeah it's fine man like and you just walk out is that what people are doing to these statue makers like really like, yeah don't worry about it so yeah, yeah. right like, yeah, they, yeah they're afraid to give yeah, bad feedback on the right? guy's art because they're so bad. statues are in the dark ages where are the dark ages statues I Sorry. think that it, at some point in the statue making process like when the statue becomes something that you can recognize and see what it's going to be in its final form it's already too late to go back and change it I don't know because like. Uh, I actually have seen statue. Do you ever watch those like old NFL films thing where it's like, you know, your guy going into the Hall of Fame and they're carving up like right there. Those look awesome. And those are, I feel like most NFL Hall of Fame busts are very good. Most. Some aren't, but most of them are very good. I was listening to the Hoop Collective podcast with Brian Windhorst this morning. And he said that he saw this statue nine months ago and they had all this time, I don't know how much you can do. I'm sure you can not necessarily sand it down, but like make some changes once it's kind of in its final form. This looks so bad. Like, Did he think it looked bad nine months ago? Did he say that? He said he thought he didn't relay that feedback to whoever made it. I mean, that's not his, I'm sure he just got sent like some type of early press release or something like that, like this it'd is be, coming. It'd be very funny if like the, the sculptor yeah. got a call from Brian <laughs> <Yeah. Winters. laughs> 
Hey, uh, no disrespect, but your statue fucking sucks, man. <laughs> yeah. It's a bad statue. At some point, we got to reach, we probably already have the technology, right? Where you do a, a scan and then just 3D print the statue and it looks perfect. <laughs> I have no concept of what 3D printing is. I feel like... Same. I'm with you there. Do they have those at Kinko's? I don't think so. <laughs> Kinko's is dead, brother. Uh, is very it? much not, no. FedEx Kinko's now. Oh, yeah. Well, well yeah. But same thing. Yeah, I, I print. I printed stuff at Kinko's within the last year. But uh, where does a person find a 3D printer? I think online. I think online? Online. Yeah, could you 3D print a 3D printer? They just made one 3D printer. Who makes a 3D printer? I have no idea. Like <laughs> I, HP? I'm, I have no idea. I'm with you. It's honestly kind of offensive that we don't have one in this office. That's true. We should get one of those, and we should get one of the, the robot butlers from Tesla. Yeah. Get one of those guys. But how would it, like, my, in my mind, a printer is a, something like this. Like, is a 3D printer, like, as big as a building? I think it could be, like, as big as... Would you, would you know it if you saw one? machine? Yeah, I think I would. I think I've seen them, like... Where? I don't know. At a, at a store? I think I've seen... Oh, I think I've seen, like, the printer got a thing that goes back and forth and it just sculpts it up. I don't know. All I'm saying is that the technology exists to make perfect statues right now. Allegedly. But they want the human touch to it. Yeah. Fair. Um, all right. I think that wraps up for sports talk. Do we have anything uh, post-show? Or I guess um, uh, New York City is having their vote uh, to Tate or not to Tate today. Yeah. How are we feeling about that as a... Tate didn't look too optimistic about it. He didn't. He came into the stream yesterday for like a quarter and then bounced to the airport. Uh, he looked afraid. He, it was like his goodbye. Like he was going off to a war that he knew he wasn't coming back from. I think there might be a lot of people who just don't give a shit. Like people like that are getting a vote like large who's like, ah, I just, well, I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. make this guy move. You know, so he might get bailed out by that. His worst case scenario is if everyone does the defer process and is like, Kelly, I'm gonna respect your wishes. Let me know which way to vote. And then yeah. he's fucked. Yeah. Can you write in? Can you write in, like, send him to L.A., start Stu La La again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nick Insider. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get the feeling that he's going to be sent to New York, but I also might only be getting that feeling because the most vocal people are obviously the ones that have skin in the gang, and they want him to move to New York. So, like Eddie said, the largest of the world, the people that aren't very opinionated one way or the other, they might be the silent majority that says, no, we don't really want to make him do that. I feel like he's just got like, I, I think, and he owned up to this after. I think he's just got to take an L and realize that he's just got to play ball and apologize. Like he has admitted that he doesn't want to go to New York and he's got a life here, which is fair. And I guess he has a girlfriend here or whatever. That's great. So like it would be, and he just moved from Cleveland or you know somewhere in Ohio. So it would be kind of a shock and whatever, and not good for him to move to New York in his in his mind. So if he doesn't want to do that, I think he just has to play ball, do what they say. Like I heard someone say, if he like begs to not go, then they will grant him mercy and not have a move. So why would you not just do that? And I he gets to state like a final case. I think there's some type of like hearing. Speech, I think Jeff yeah. D. Lowe's involved, like oh, okay. as far as moderating. So that he should do a like a special one man dozen. And if he gets above a certain score, then he doesn't have to move. <laughs> It'd be like New York office trivia, like trivia about the people's lives in New York. That would be very funny. And if he's actually done his homework and knows enough about them to show that he cares about them, then he can go back to Chicago. Yeah. I'm interested to see how it plays out, but best of luck to New York and uh, Tate, however, yep. it, however it goes. Anything else post-show post you guys got? That's it. Beat the Cardinals. <laughs> and he's sad. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching the rundown. See you guys.